Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord. We gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. At his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather together today as God's wonderful people to fellowship one with another, to lift up one another and to care for one another, to pray for one another and to make a difference in one another's lives. We gather today to worship. Hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. were in the boat and Jesus came walking across the water to them 
And they thought it was a ghost. And so Simon Peter said, Lord, if that's you, call out to me and, and me walk to you on the water. He said, come. So Simon Peter started walking across the water to it. But he took his eyes off of him and he started looking around and he got scared and he started to sink. That's kind of scary, isn't it? So Jesus came over and lended him a helping hand and picked him up. And he, he, was, he was wanting to know why he doubted him, why he lost his faith. And as we walk in our faith, we have several people that can help us out. They can lend us a helping hand to keep our eyes on Jesus. And that's the, good, that's the cool thing about being a part of the church is everybody here can help you in your walk of faith. Anything that you have questions about or you need an answer for something. There's always somebody here that can help you, whether it be the preacher or, or anybody, any member of the church. And so I think that's, that's really cool is that we have such a great group of people here that can always help us and uh, answer something that we don't know. Let's have a prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for these children. Please help us to walk by faith and not by sight and keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember all those that are sick and those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of these and touch these in a mighty way. We want to continue to remember Kevin Camel. Uh, glad Kevin is with us today. Uh, his mother's funeral will be Thursday at three o'clock at, at Dolly Cooper Memorial Park there uh, and on the way into Anderson. So keep Kevin in, in your prayers and continue to lift him up. And we just ask the Lord to walk with him day by day. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your concern, your goodness, your mercy, as you continue to reach out and touch each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for walking with us day by day, for holding us close and blessing us mightily. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. For in him we find hope for each day. In him we find life. And we find it so abundantly. In him we find that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that need your touch this day. Lord, those in the nursing home, those that are bereaved, those that are going through tests, Lord, you know each and every one of these. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you might hold them close, bless them mightily. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts and you know our circumstances and our situation. Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just ask for your touch to be upon each and every one of us gathered here today as you continue to meet our needs. And Heavenly Father, we pray for your precious Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit might touch each and every one of our hearts, that your Holy Spirit might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, may we be drawn closer to you and closer to one another, that we might make that difference in one another's lives. Heavenly Father, may your Spirit go with us throughout this service, that everything we say and everything we do might bring glory and honor to your holy name. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 349, we will sing it twice. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 836. We're reading from Psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and faithfulness, why should the nation say, where is their God? Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. And have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear, noses but do not smell. They have hands but do not feel, feet but do not walk, throats but they never sound. Those who make idols are like them. So are all who trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. The Lord is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. The Lord is their help and their shield. I'd like to share this with you this morning. We usually honor a person when they turn 90, and Wilton Darby will turn 90 on August the 16th, which is this Wednesday. And so I'd just like to share this with you. James W. Darby turns 90 on August the 16th. He's been a faithful member of Dials United Methodist Church all his life. Mr. Darby served in the 398th Engineer Construction Battalion in World War II at Fort Belleville, Virginia. Mr. Darby retired from Carolina Delivery Service and the Greenville News with 50 years of service. He also retired from the Lawrence County Dump after a number of years of service. He's a very loving father of, of three, a grandfather of five, and a great-grandfather of ten. One of Wilton's life's pleasure has been helping others. What was delivering groceries for those not able or mowing the lawn or taking folks to the doctor or just visiting friends unable to leave their house. Wilton has, many, has made time and been a helpful hand to those in need. And so we wish Wilton the best on his 90th birthday, and he has been a faithful member of this church, and we continue to pray for him, and we just ask the Lord to continue to walk with Wilton day by day. By way of announcements, remember the shower next Sunday from 2 to 3.30. Keep that in mind, and then the Last Sunday in the month, we will have our covered dish meal. I will put it in the bulletin to remind you next Sunday. But the last Sunday in the month, we will have our covered dish meal. Are there any other announcements that we need to make today? I'd like to thank everybody for all the school supplies that you provided. Uh, and Jana took them this week. and. Uh, it's amazing what we can do when we come together to do the work of the Lord and make a difference in the lives of people throughout the community. We will be doing something at Christmas and uh, for some families, and I know Jan has talked about uh, maybe taking one family. I'm going to challenge you this morning to take five families, so I'm going to be a little bold. bold and then I'm going to be like Peter. We're going to get out the boat and we're going to walk. Okay, uh, so we'll make a challenge to the folks that we are really don't uh, take a risk. Uh, if you don't set a goal, if you set a goal for one, then you, then that's not too much of a goal. But if we set a goal for five and we make four, then uh, we'll 
be heading in the right direction. So I'm going to challenge you as we reach out to make a difference in the lives of people in this community as we continue to make that difference. Just think about the people that bought that acre of land and built this church 200 years ago, the risk they were taking, and we're here today because they were willing to take that risk. And the church will continue if we continue to take that risk to reach out and make that difference. If there's no other announcements, we will worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that have given them. Heavenly Father, receive these gifts for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make that difference in the lives of those around about us. In Jesus' name, amen.
reading this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the winds was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. When they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life into your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that comes from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these are your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation there be pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject this morning is just simply fear. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been in a situation like those disciples on the Sea of Galilee? When the wind was boisterous, and they thought that their boat would be overturned. Have you ever found yourself in a situation like that, where you were afraid and fear overcame you? There have been different times in my life when I have felt that fear, when I was afraid. And I've shared that with you from time to time. One of the times was in 1967, when we were in Vietnam, when we went out on patrol, and there were six of us and one dog. We went out on patrol in the afternoon, and we were supposed to head back in before dark. But the sergeant that was leading the platoon did not know how to find a way back to the camp. And so we had to spend the night in the jungle. And we sat around in that circle, back to back, looking, waiting. And then about midnight, we could hear the voices of the Vietnamese coming our way. We didn't know whether they were Viet Cong we didn't know whether they were the Vietnamese, south or north. We didn't know who they were. But we knew that there were more of them than there were of us. And we knew that if we did anything, we could lose our life. And so we sit there waiting for them to pass. Folks, you become afraid, and fear sets in. But you learn to pray, 
and you learn to pray fast. And you learn to pray long. And we prayed, waiting for morning to come. And finally, the sun came up and the morning came. And we called back in and found our way back to the camp. The other time was in 1977, 1979, when my daughter was not quite two years old, Amanda. She had something like asthma and a breathing attack. And we ended up in the hospital and she was in a tent for a week. And I can remember looking at her trying to get her breath, afraid, fear setting in that we might lose this precious child. We prayed to God and, and we bargained with God. We did everything we could. And God brought her through, and this year she turned 40, and she's given us three grandchildren. We're thankful that God heard our prayer and made that difference. But every one of us at some time or another go through a time when we're afraid, when there's fear in our hearts. Just like those disciples on the Sea of Galilee. Fear is our greatest enemy. Franklin Roosevelt said the only thing we had to fear is fear itself. Fear separates us from being able to do what God wants us to do. Fear stifles us from accomplishing what we need to do. It, it, keeps us from reaching out, taking that risk. Fear blinds us and also binds us. It blinds us to the opportunity that we can be about doing God's work. It keeps us from being able to making that difference. But it binds us to wanting to stay in our safety zone and not taking a risk, not willing to reach out to make that difference. Someone said that the opposite of faith was not doubt, but it's fear. With faith, we can move a mountain. But with fear, we sit still, not able to do what God would want us to do. Zig Ziglar, in one of his books, talks about the 2002 Winter Olympics. A young skater, 16 years old, by the name of Sarah Hughes, didn't have anything to lose. She was not well known. She didn't expect to win a medal. And so when she went out on the ice to skate, she gave it all that she had. And she went through every routine, giving it everything that she had because she knew she didn't have anything to lose. She skated flawlessly and had a great skating event. The young lady that was to follow her, Michelle, was a known skater, was expected to win the gold medal. But as Michelle was skating, she slipped and fell. And she ended up winning the bronze medal, and Sarah won the gold medal. The reason was because Sarah had nothing to lose, and she was willing to risk everything. Michelle was trying to keep from making a mistake. And so she had her eyes on not making a mistake instead of giving it all that she had. And folks, 
when we put our eyes on trying to avoid a mistake, we end up failing and coming short of what God wants us to do. And so this morning, how do we face that fear? And how do we get over it so that we can be all that God would have us to be? First of all, we turn our eyes towards Jesus. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, we are able to carry out that faith in him. Jesus came to those disciples that were afraid on the water. And they thought it was a ghost. And they were afraid. And he said, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Simon Peter said, Lord, if that's you, call to me that I might come to you. And Jesus said, come. And so as Simon Peter got out of the boat, willing to take that risk, he kept his eyes on Jesus. And as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But once he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. And Jesus reached out his hand and lifted him up. Why did you doubt? What happened to your faith? Folks, this morning, it's important for us to keep our eyes on Jesus so that we can carry out that faith and make that difference in, in the lives of people and make a difference in this community. And how do we keep our eyes on Jesus? We keep remembering the cross. We keep remembering how much God loves each and every one of us and what God was willing to do for each and every one of us as he gave his son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary's cross, that his shed blood would cleanse us from our sin. When the blood of a million sheep and goat would do nothing, one drop of the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our sin. And there on the cross, he paid for our sin in full. The debt was paid. And Jesus Christ gave it all for you and me. And so as we keep our eyes on him, when we stumble and we fall and we come short of the glory of God, we continue to remember the cross and how much he loves us and how much he cares for and what he did for us. And the Holy Spirit begins to work in us. And as that Holy Spirit works in us, we become closer and closer to God. And so as we keep our eyes on Jesus, then we begin to move forward to make that difference. We're willing to get out of the boat and take that risk. Apostle Paul was one of those that was able to forget about the past and press towards the goal of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul was able to forget all that he'd done in the past because he couldn't change it. But he could take a risk and preach the cross to the Gentiles that they might be saved, that they might know how much God loved them and what Jesus Christ had done for him on Calvary's cross. He was willing to take that risk. He was willing to step out of the boat. And folks, this morning, we too need to move forward. We need to step out of the boat and willing to take that risk. Jana and Rana was willing to take a risk. They didn't know whether or not we'd get one box or two boxes or three boxes, what we would get. But they were willing to take a risk and they took 16 boxes. Folks, we have to be willing to take a risk. Brenda had to take a risk in inviting Francis to, to, to this church. 
She's become a faithful member here every Sunday because you're willing to take a risk. You see, sometimes it, 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 there's fear in our hearts and we're afraid to invite somebody. But when we're willing to step out and say, I want you to come to church with me. When we're willing to take that risk, we can make a difference. Think about the people that started this church and, and bought this first acre and built the church. They were willing to make that difference. And folks, if this church is going to continue to live, then we too have to be willing to take that risk. To reach out and say, I want you to come and be a part of the church. And then at the same time, we have to be willing to change. Willing to, to do something. Willing to reach out and let people know that we care about them. I believe with all my heart that we can make a difference this Christmas in at least five families. Because I believe my God is a big God and a mighty God. And I know the hearts of each and every one of you. And I know that you care about people. And I believe that we can make that difference as we reach out. And folks, you know, as we keep our eyes on the Lord, we forget about the past because we can't change it. And we begin to look to the future and we walk forward. You know, we draw closer and closer to the Lord. The story is told of a little three-year-old girl that was on a train that was going from one city to another. And this little girl was running up and down the aisle and she was meeting everybody. And, and the people wondered, who, who is her father or who is her mother? Because she seems to just go everywhere and, and don't mind talking to everybody on the train. And as the train began to come to a tunnel and started to go under the tunnel, the little girl got anxious. And all of a sudden, she ran back to the back of the train. And there was a, man, a young man sitting in the back of the train. And she climbed up into his arms. And he held her. And she found peace in his arms. They knew who her father was. And folks, that's the way it is with us. As we go through the dark tunnels of life, as we go through the storms of life and the boat begins to rock and the waves are heavy, folks, God reaches down to Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit and he lifts us up. And folks, when we're willing to take that risk like those disciples were willing to take, he will be there for us, and He will make that difference in our lives. And folks, when we go through the dark tunnels, and when we go through those difficult times in life, He will be there for us, for He promises us He will never leave us nor forsake us, but He will be with us unto the end. Every one of us at some time or another will be afraid, and fear will fill our hearts. But we can know that we're not alone, that Christ Jesus is with us. Hymn number 509, Jesus, Savior, pilot me.
Heavenly Father, there will be circumstances in our lives when we will be afraid and fear will fill our hearts. But you have promised us that you would never leave us nor forsake us, but that you would be with us always. Heavenly Father, as we go through those dark tunnels and that boisterous sea, Heavenly Father, may you pilot each and every one of us that you might be with us. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.